Within this first session, we're going to define some general concepts behind network slicing. So we'll look at some of the driving factors. We'll consider what exactly a network slice is. As part of that, we'll consider slice management and orchestration. And then finally, we'll take a look at standardization. To consider the driving factors behind network slicing, we really need to take a look at the journey that we've had to get to 5G. So right now today, we've seen non-standalone 5G deployed quite extensively. And we're currently in the rollout phase of standalone 5G, bearing in mind that you need standalone 5G for network slicing. But we really need to take a look back at 4G to figure out why we are here today with this notion of network slicing. When 4G was released, remember it was release eight of the 3GPP specifications, but when it was actually launched in about 2009, it was very much a consumer centric technology. It was all about the latest generations of smartphones and everything was very much app orientated. And over the years since 2019, there's been a lot of organizations which have made a great deal of money from apps. The problem is for the mobile service provider, well, they've not necessarily been as exposed to that particular revenue stream. So we need to improve things for the service provider. We need to really be moving away from a purely consumer-centric market. And an attempt was made to introduce cellular IoT to LTE. Indeed, we have the cellular IoT LTE technologies of narrowband IoT and LTE-M. And this allowed mobile service providers to start to move away from the consumer market and to start to bring on board other organizations, other customers, and other market verticals as an extra revenue stream. As part of that, you can see the acronym DCN, which is Dedicated Core Networks, and we'll touch on that momentarily. So cellular IoT was really introduced to LTE in release 13, quite a long time after LTE was originally introduced. And largely in about 2014 timeframe, we saw machine to machine traffic rising quite considerably, but bear in mind that we've already seen it quite extensively in 2G and 3G. It was in 2018 that actually 4G surpassed 2G as the most popular cellular technology. But coincidentally, it was also about 2018 where we started to see the initial first deployments of non-standalone 5G, 5G new radio in this particular case. So that was about release 15. And at that time, towards the end of 2018, we had 745 LTE networks compared to just 10 5G networks. Now clearly today that situation has changed, but 5G still has got some way to go to reach now the approximately 780 LTE networks that we have. So we've got quite a lot of rollout to continue with respect to 5G, but interestingly, it's worth looking at what's happened with cellular IoT because in the same time frame as our 745 LTE networks and 10 5G networks. For LTE in particular, we only had 74 narrowband IoT commercial networks and 28 LTE-M commercial networks. And again, that figure has changed a little bit over the years that have followed 2018, but not drastically. So we see network slicing potentially as an opportunity for mobile service providers to basically start to work with more market verticals. But it's important to remember from our experience with cellular IoT that we've got to find the customers. And that means that all parts of a mobile service provider's organization have to be on board with the notion of network slicing. We need to be able to sell network slicing to that customer whoever they may be, and we'll come on to that momentarily. Now, in this slide, we mentioned dedicated core networks. Dedicated core networks are a 4G technology, and sometimes there's a comparison to network slicing, but it's not a like-for-like -like comparison. If you hear the term dedicated core networks, 
What it essentially is, is, well, here's our LTE architecture in its basic form. Dedicated core networks operate on the core only, so we can create several virtual EPCs for potentially different traffic groups or customer groups. So here we've got MTC, Internet Access and Voice. They're all logically separate instances of the Evolve Packet core, but they're on the same physical infrastructure. But the point to note is this is not end-to-end, -end, it's core-centric, whereas 5G network slicing, as we will see, is end-to-end. -end. So we don't have a direct mapping. We may not have direct interoperability, although we can conduct things like handovers between 5G and 4G. If we're operating network slices in 5G, we might not be able to pull them all across to 4G and map them all to dedicated core networks. Certainly the end-to-end -end capability won't be there in 4G. However, let's stick with network slicing. So network slicing for 5G, what exactly is it in basic terms? As you can see, it's a logical network that provides specific network capabilities and network characteristics in order to serve a defined business purpose of a customer. And the point is that 5G as a technology is not just for the consumer market. 5G is designed to be an enabling network for lots and lots of different market verticals, a handful of which are shown on screen there. So if we were to rely on the consumer market to pay off 5G as a technology, we'd be waiting a very, very long time. By offering network slices to different customers across different market verticals and allowing each of those customers to independently manage and analyze their own network slice, then it paves the way for mobile service providers to increase their revenue. And that's fundamentally what network slicing is designed to do. So now let's take the opportunity to define exactly what a network slice is. Up on screen, you can see the service provider's 5G network infrastructure. And fundamentally, it's made up of three main domains. We've got the next generation radio access network. We've got the 5G core, but we've also got the underlying packet data transport infrastructure. Fundamentally, these three domains are what need to be in place to support a network slice. A network slice, if we're going to create this logical end-to-end -end instance of a 5G network, has got to be configured on the RAN and the core and the transport network. Now, before we move on, it's worth pointing out that we don't necessarily need to be using a 5G next generation radio access network. We can use a non-3GPP access network like Wi-Fi, and we could even be using wireline access as well. They all fall under the remit of network slicing. So the concept is, across our infrastructure, across our RAN and our car and our transport network, we are going to create a network slice. Now that network slice is logically separate from all other network slices, and that network slice will support a set of attributes and qualities and characteristics. So across our physical underlying infrastructure, we could have multiple network slices deployed. So we've got one for internet access, one for automotive, and lots of others potentially, potentially hundreds of network slices actually in place in the network. And that would be very good news for the mobile service provider because it means they've got lots and lots of customers using that network slice. And that would be very good news for the mobile service provider because they've got lots and lots of customers using those different network slices. But what you can see on screen is it's okay to imagine hundreds of network slices, but that does require very comprehensive slice orchestration. We need to be able to manage these network slices, lifecycle management, instantiate them, maintain them, and tear them down 
when they're no longer required. Not only that, we need to independently monitor them. Because if I'm a customer and I'm paying money to a mobile service provider for my network slice, I want to make sure that my network slice is performing. So we also need to support the likes of analytics within our network slice on an independent network slice basis. Now, let's focus a little bit on these characteristics of the network slice. The key point to network slicing is each network slice can have different characteristics. And the characteristics that we do have are dependent on the service level agreement that we have in place with the network slice customer, the NSC as it's called. Well, from the 3GPP's perspective, we have what are known as slice or service types. And we will elaborate on this concept a little bit later on, but presently there's five. So we've got an enhanced mobile broadband slice type. We've got a massive machine type communication slice type. We've got ultra reliable and low latency communication slice type. We've got a specific V2X slice type. And then finally, a high performance machine type communication slice type. So there's five at present and our customers of these network slices, their requirements should generally fall into one of these brackets, but they don't necessarily have to. Slices can be configured in the network depending on the requirements of the customer and the capabilities of the mobile service provider. So this is just an indication. And as we can see later on in the training, the mobile service provider does not have to stick to these particular high level slice types. As mentioned in the previous chapter, orchestration of network slicing is absolutely critical. Orchestration is used to create the network slice, manage it and terminate it when it's no longer required. So to put things into perspective, let's consider how a network slice will be created, although we will elaborate on these techniques in more detail later on in the training. Here we've got a network slice customer, an NSC, so it's a vehicle manufacturer, and they want access to their vehicles through a 5G network slice. So maybe we're using that network slice to deliver infotainment. Maybe we're using the network slice to harvest telemetry data from the vehicle. We may even be using this network slice to deliver safety system data to the vehicle. So what we need between the vehicle and the actual application servers is our 5G network. And we know those three critical domains that we need for the network slice. We've got the RAN and the CAR and, and the PTN. So we need a situation whereby the mobile service provider can negotiate with the network slice customer exactly what the requirements of the network slice are. And remember, it might not just be one network slice, it could be several. So for every network slice required, we have a nest. Now the nest is known as a network slice template. And the nest will define all of the attributes required for that network slice. So if we need a particular level of latency, it would be in the nest. If we need a particular level of reliability or security or downlink data throughput, it's all contained within the nest. So the nest will be negotiated and there's different ways that this may occur. But fundamentally, what happens on a customer level, part of really a business cycle, needs to manifest itself into the network slice management and orchestration. We need to take a look at what the customer wants and then have that manifested into the actual network as a network slice. So we need to do a translation. We translate those network slice template attributes into key parameters that now need to be set in the RAN and the core and the packet transport network. And it's up to slice management and orchestration to then independently configure each component of that network slice. So what we say to the NG RAN will be different to what we say to the 5G core, which will be different again to what we say to the packet transport network. But collectively, the overall configuration means that a network slice ends up being configured with the correct attributes. And once it's available, the devices, in this case cars, can connect to their home application servers 
using that specific network slice. Standardization within network slicing is critical, and although we know that it's largely the 3GPP that define 5G as a technology, there are other standards development organizations that are involved with network slicing. So let's just take a look within this particular diagram at some of the most pertinent specifications. And as you might imagine, we start with 23.501, which is a 3GPP spec. This is the main system architectural spec for 5G. And in this is a lot of detail on exactly how network slicing is defined and operates within 5G. Now, there was focus on network slicing in release 15 when 5G was first introduced. And we've continued to see network slicing evolve through various phases across later releases, release 16, 17, 18, and so on. Where 23.501 is mainly architecture, we also need to consider system procedures. And again, network slicing has an impact on the different procedures that take place in 5G, such as registration and PDU session establishment. So this spec defines exactly how network slicing is impacted. We've also got quite specific specifications which hold very detailed information on network slicing. So we've got specifications such as 28530 to 533 and also 28541, which is all about not just specifically network slice management and orchestration, but there are components of network slicing within all of these documents, which is absolutely critical. And we'll look at some of that detail later on in the training. For other standards development organizations, we've got the GSMA and the GSMA are frequently involved in the standardization of various technologies. Now, NG116 is not necessarily a standard as such. What it is, is the main attribute suite for the network slice template. And we'll elaborate on NG116 later on in the training. We've also got additional GSMA documents. Now, again, these are not necessarily defining how we do network slicing, but these are informational. So we've got things like the end-to-end -end network slicing architecture, which is a useful document to take a look at. And then from Etsy, we've got further specs. So Etsy are responsible for MEC, multi-access edge computing. So they've got specific documentation on how MEC is involved with network slicing. And they've also got specs like zero touch network and service management, which is to do with management and orchestration. But we're just scratching the surface here. There are lots of other standards development organizations which are involved and on board with network slicing. Organizations like the IETF, for example, organizations related to the packet transport network infrastructure. There's a lot of organizations, including market verticals as well, that are involved with slicing standardization.